Good morning YouTube, this is Waterfall Joe and welcome back to another video. Today we're here in Northwest Connecticut on a beautiful autumn Wednesday. It's a bit sunny and it's very dry right now, but we're going to be exploring some landscapes. I have my new camera with me, we're going to be traveling around, I'm going to be showing you some beautiful destinations for you to come check out. So let's dive in. The structure behind me is called the Seville Dam and it was created to make this ginormous reservoir called the Barkhamstead Reservoir. Now this reservoir is the main water supply for the city of Hartford. It has over 30 billion gallons of water in it, so it's huge. Now the main reason that we come here is for this breathtaking stone structure here. This is an amazing place. People come here with their drones. They come here for sunrise, sunset. It's beautiful any time of the year. So I have my camera here and I'm going to be trying to go for a long exposure reflection of this. Okay, so I have my live ND going. You can see in the top left corner, ND128. That's a seven stop ND filter. I have the ISO on the bottom here set to ISO 80. And we're at F10, which is a little bit higher than I want to be. But uh, I am going for a four second exposure. And you can actually see we do have quite a good reflection here. Now, on days like today when it's super bright, you know, it is very challenging to get a long exposure of any sort. So I am only working with my 12 to 40. It is my only lens currently. So I will end up having to crop in a little bit later on. My next plan is I would like to get a 40 to 150 at some point just to get a little bit more telephoto action. So here we are at 40 millimeters. You know, when I go in, I'm probably gonna crop out some of the grass on the bottom, but this is actually a really peaceful morning here at the, at the dam. Another shot a lot of people like to do is they like to take their cars and they like to park them in front of the dam right over there, but there's just way too much traffic. You're not actually supposed to park there. I don't really want to get hit by a semi truck today, but I will maybe come back in the morning at some point for sunrise and uh, get my car in front of the dam. So we're actually getting some good shots. I can't wait to share them with you. We're going to be heading up the road here in a second and we're going to be heading up to Ender's Falls. Now Enders Falls is one of Connecticut's finest waterfalls and you've probably seen pictures of it. It has one of the most unique flows I've ever seen. Uh, unfortunately today it's probably not flowing very good but I've just been craving to go out shooting especially with the new camera so I'm, I'm well aware I may not get the best flow. I know I'm not going to get any world-class waterfall photos today but I'm just excited to go out shooting regardless. You know we are in a drought here in Connecticut next week finally we're going to get some rain and finally hopefully the red flag alert can go away and finally Maybe the creeks will finally start filling up, but I've just been, I think it's hilarious. I bought a new camera, especially for my waterfalls, and then it stops raining for three months. So as a landscape photographer, especially a waterfall photographer, I feel kind of deprived lately, but I have, I have been doing okay. You know, I'm, I'm doing stuff like this. I went down to the coast. I'm hoping to do a coast video soon with you guys. So, but I do hope once December, January, February hits, I hope it's nice and cold. I hope we get some snow. I hope the, the creeks start flowing again. Um, I just cannot wait to share more content with you guys. So we're going to go ahead and head down to the waterfall now. I'm going to do my best to capture whatever flowing water I can. It's, there's not a single cloud in the sky. It's dry. It's not really the best waterfall conditions at all. But once again, I'm just craving shooting. So let's go ahead and head on to the waterfall now. We just left the reservoir and the dam, and now we're here in the woods. Welcome to Ender's Falls. This is the first of five waterfalls as they progress down, down the mountain here. Honestly, I'm impressed that this is flowing at all with how little rain we've had in the past few months. Let's just tell you a little bit about Ender's Falls. So Ender's Falls is located in the Ender's State Forest, about 10 minutes west of Bradley International Airport. Good news is you really can't hear any airplanes or any traffic over the sound of the creek. So that's really relaxing and peaceful. This is one of Connecticut's most premier waterfall destinations. You have this, plus you have four more, and we're going to get to those. You have four more increasing in size as you work your way down toward the bottom. This is one of the most beautiful places in Connecticut that I've been to at least. And in terms of waterfalls, I don't know if it gets much better than this. A few months ago, I made a video talking about Spruce Brook Falls, which also features five waterfalls in one hike. 
I'll let you decide which one you like better. Just keep in mind, it rained a lot more back then than it is now. But further downstream is one of the most jaw-dropping waterfalls in all of Connecticut, and probably one of the most unique waterfalls. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get on my camera. We're gonna do some long exposure action of the little flow we have here, and we're just gonna have some fun. So one of my favorite features of the OM-1 is the live ND filter, as I have discussed before. As a waterfall shooter, I think ND filters are one of the most crucial parts of our photography, as well as a polarizer. But the OM-1 and a lot of other, a lot of OM systems, other cameras actually have ND filter simulation built into the camera. The OM-1 Mark II in particular can go all the way up to seven stops of live ND. Now that's especially important for waterfall photography, and also it helps to keep some weight out of my bag. I don't have to carry four or five different ND filters of different stops in my camera bag. So, so as a hiker, that really helps to keep the weight low in my bag. Okay, so I currently have a polarizer on and you can see how powerful this is when I spin the polarizer. You can see here on the rock how it kind of clears up that annoying glare on the rock. So now we're polarized and I actually have my camera set to the AF on button, turns on my ND filter. You can see up here in the corner, now it says ND32. So we now have an ND filter and you can actually see the camera replicating the long exposure. Watch what happens when I turn it off. And watch what happens when I turn it back on. You can see the water is now silky. And I have it set to do a five second exposure. So let's go and take that and see how that looks. The sun is pretty harsh today. So we were able to get that long exposure effect. So I'm, I'm a big fan of using a lens hood, especially on the sunny days but you can actually see it's still getting a little bit of glare. And if I put my hand in front of the, the lens, it actually helps to eliminate some of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my long exposure and I'm actually gonna hold my hand up here in the corner, hopefully not in the photo, just to help get a little extra glare. Let's see, did I go too far? Yeah, I went too far. Let's do another one. And now you can see we eliminated even more glare out of the photo. I'm not really a fan of photographing waterfalls on sunny days, but Today it's actually helping a little bit to help bring some color to the greens and make some, some highlights to kind of draw the eye in. It uh, adds almost a, a, a ethereal, dreamy vibe to it. So I, I am enjoying it. Here is the second waterfall. Even in low flow, this is still such a beautiful waterfall. As I mentioned earlier, you can see there's all sorts of strands Okay, so we're set up vertically here. I'm kind of pushing it to the limit with the tripod. I really don't want to get any of the railing in the shot. But we have it set to a three-stop ND filter, ISO 200, f5.6 for 1.3 seconds. I'm really loving these leaves mixed with that moss right there. I think that makes for a really nice photo. I'm probably gonna bump up the vibrance a little bit, make it a more, little bit more saturated. But overall, even with the low flow, I think this is a breathtaking waterfall. Definitely the highlight of my visit so far. There still are a few more as we work our way down, but I really think this is the most special waterfall here. So here's another view of the waterfall. Unfortunately, it's kind of blocked by a tree, but you can see there's another waterfall down here at the bottom. So we've came downstream from the main waterfall we just were at. We're heading down to the third waterfall, but look at this view. We've got this great reflection. The water is very still. We can see the main waterfall and all of its tiers further upstream there. I'm gonna get the camera and I'm going to get hopefully a shot of that with its reflection. So this is beautiful though.
So normally the water is flowing enough to go over this little lip here, but right now it's so low that the only water that's flowing is in this little channel that's been cut out over probably hundreds of thousands of years of water. I can't even imagine how grand of a waterfall this would be if all of this water was flowing over this ledge instead of just this little amount here. So I think we're now on the third waterfall as we work our way down Ender's Falls. But look at this one. This one's really cool. I love how it's just a single plunge like that. I've got my camera set up. I'm gonna do some long exposures. This one's really neat and I love that even in low flow, it's, it's still really impressive. So this place is just one after another of really impressive waterfalls. Aside from just how beautiful Ender's Falls is, I love that you get a variety of waterfalls to choose from. This one being a plunge waterfall, the one up above being a cascading where it kind of works its way down the embankment there. I really love that this place just kind of has a little bit of it all. Connecticut is not known for plunge drop waterfalls. We really don't have a lot of those. There's not a lot of waterfalls that just kind of fall off like this. They all kind of work their way down the side of a mountain or something. So this is really cool that we have some choices here. Okay, we've made it down to the bottom waterfall. I've only counted four so far. I've heard that there's five. I don't actually know where the fifth one is. I'm gonna keep going down and seeing if it's there, but I've only seen four so far. But here it is. This one's absolutely beautiful as well. We're gonna set up the camera once again. I'm gonna get some long exposures and uh, let's just check it out. I know earlier I was complaining about the sun and how bright it was, but I've actually looked out, a lot of these waterfalls are actually kind of tucked down in like a gully. They've kind of dug, they've kind of dug themselves into the rocks. The sun is kind of, it hasn't reached them yet. You can see we're kind of in this valley right here. So we're actually getting some perfect waterfall conditions in terms of the lighting. So this is really, this is working out really well today actually. So I didn't even plan on this happening, but the sun is actually starting to rise right over the hill there. And I'm actually getting a sun star in my photo. Totally unplanned, but this is working out lovely directly over the waterfall here. Let's check it out. So you can see right there is the sun, and if we take this shot... It's almost more rewarding to be shooting handheld without a tripod than being restricted to my tripod. I just feel like I can aim, walk around freely. Oh, and if you're worried, I might drop it. I do have a, a wrist strap on, by the way. But I can just walk around freely. I'm not restricted by my tripod by any means. I can come out here to the, to the water and the rocks where it might be a little difficult to set up a tripod. I don't know if you guys can still see me in the frame over here or not, but I've worked my way all the way up to the front here. Now we're really close to the waterfall, just to give you a sense of scale of this place. Really, really impressive. And we're hand holding right up here. I think one of the best parts about a camera like this is the ability to move around freely and just walk around with the camera and not really have to feel weighted down by a tripod, by heavy lenses. I can just freely walk around this waterfall. No worries at all. So I found the fifth waterfall. I ended up having to cross the stream. I'm on the other side now from the stairs. But here's the fifth one. It's actually in between the first and second one. It was just kind of tucked back away when you come down from the stairs. So there it is. Lovely reflection we have. So I think for this spot, I think that we're gonna embrace the reflection. As you can see, we have a really perfect reflection of the trees. There's actually a big log tuck over there. I'm actually going hands-free, no tripod on this one. And I'm really just gonna to try to get that reflection, get some silky water in the, in the textures of the waterfall. Yeah, this is a really nice spot. So I am a firm believer in using a circular polarizer. I believe especially for waterfalls, it helps to kind of enhance the photo a little bit. But on this photo, I'm actually going to reduce it. I still have it on, but I'm actually gonna reduce how intense it is because we have such a good reflection. I don't really wanna lose that reflection at all. And you can see on, on the right here, we have some sunlight up against the wall. I'm gonna to try to capture that.
I've been playing around with compositions in terms of vertical or horizontal. This one actually can go pretty well as both, but I'm just seeing, you know, experimenting around, trying different shots, because when I get home, I want to have a variety of photos to pick from. So I just stumbled upon this composition here. I really like how these roots kind of lead your eye and actually the roots and the moss kind of lead your eye toward the waterfall. So I, that's actually the composition we're working with right now. And I actually put the camera in the 50 megapixel or the 50 megabyte high res mode. You can see the little symbol down here that indicates that we're in high res mode. And I'm taking the photo and it does take a second to process. But once it says busy, it's actually already taken the picture, so it's already good. But this is a photo where I really want to have a lot of details of the foreground and the background. I want to have lots of depth of field. I want to have a, a lot of detail to play with later on. So here's the shot. I actually even like that we're getting a little bit of sunlight on the on the wall over there. This is. This is a really nice composition that I'm, that I'm happy that I found. All right, everyone, I'm gonna wrap up the video there. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that if you're in the area, you're able to come and check out Enders Falls. This place is really special. Whether you visit it during winter or the springtime or even here in the autumn, it's breathtaking. Summertime, probably gonna be a lot of people trying to swim here, so just keep that in mind. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below for more content like this. And thank you so much. This is Waterfall Joe. I'll see you in the